Welcome to worship at Emmanuel United Church. My name is Reverend Ronnie B. Harry. On behalf of Elizabeth, John, and Lauren, we welcome you. We welcome all of our viewers. We welcome those of you that are closer to home, those of you here in the wider North Bay area and from wherever you call home. Welcome. The music for today's service is uh, covered under our podcast license, uh, with one license. Um, uh, I'd like to thank the following people today for uh, singing. Uh, Elizabeth Henderson, uh, Elaine, Elaine Simmons, Betty Ferris, Rob Ferris, uh, and Bud McMartin. Um, so uh, earlier in the week, as you may know, we lost uh, a friend, our friend Bobby McIntyre. Uh, Bob was uh, a big North Bay supporter of the Battalion and uh, prior to that the Centennials and also the Trappers. Um, uh, he was a season ticket holder and uh, so uh, today, uh, and that's why we're wearing Battalion uh, gear today, and uh, so I I'm going to be playing some uh, uh, music uh, during the Prelude, which uh, uh, if you've ever been to a hockey game or watch a hockey game on TV, you'll recognize this music, I'm sure. Uh, some arena music. Please join with me in the call to worship. Jesus, you call us to be your disciples. You know the joys and challenges of discipleship. We know the joys and we know the challenges of discipleship. You say it is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. Being with you is sufficient for us. You fill us up with grace and you send us out to proclaim and profess your gospel. We choose to be in your presence this morning. 
Please join with me in the opening prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, it is encouraging to know that you are completing the ministry of healing and reconciliation that you began. You share in the pains of resistance and rejection. You found renewal daily in your Abba's presence. Renew us for the ministry of proclaiming gospel, of being agents for healing from the world's ailments and exposing the world's evils. Being with you is enough for us. We look up at the fluffy white billowing clouds. We see creation teeming with new life and we sense your presence. You are our joy and strength. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Here I Am, Lord, in Voices United, number 509, and we will sing verses 1 and 2.
We celebrate here in the United Church Family Sunday. And we celebrate Father's Day. I'd like to acknowledge all those who have been fathers to us. Our birth fathers, our adoptive fathers, our uncles, our grandfathers, our big brothers, our younger brothers, and our single moms. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for raising us to be the people we are. Now my friend Kathy Phillips at Erin Mills United Church shared with me a beautiful prayer that I thought I would offer for all the fathers out there. So I invite you to join your hearts with me in this prayer, a Father's Day prayer. Loving God, you are the one who knows how absolutely special fathers are. You made them that way. How else can a man work so hard, give so much, and love so unconditionally without your strength and without your example. So first, thank you for fathers. Thank you for daddies. For big, strong men with tender hearts, with hands that are calloused and rough, yet so soft and gentle when hearts need mending. God, help children to delight this day in being with their dads. Even if it must be only by phone or by FaceTime, may the precious memories flow and may they bring laughter and new love and appreciation. Please, O oh God, please take care of our dads. Though they are brave and protective, they must also be frightened sometimes when life is challenging, when money runs low, when we face uncertainty, when we need things, when we're hurt or sick, when their hearts break because they can't do it all, please help us to let them know how much we love them and how much you love them. God, forgive the men who know they are not good fathers and help them to know when and if they can make things better with your help. And for those dads who keep trying and keep loving after messing up so many times, help their children to love them even more in return. For that dad who has lost a child, please let him know that you are right there, right beside him. For nothing else can heal a heart so torn. For the father who is parenting alone, strengthen him with your love, O oh God. For those whose father is already with you, give him a hug and tell him that it is from his children. And you too, Lord, happy Father's Day. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, our first scripture reading is Psalm 86, verses 1 to 10 and 16 to 17. Prayer for deliverance from enemies. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. 
Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. These are the prayers of our four parents of faith. Come and pray in us, Holy Spirit. Next, we are going to hear from the women of the choir. In honor of Father's Day, for all fathers out there and for all those who do father-like things for us, we are going to hear This Is My Father's World. If you want to follow along, it's in Voices United on page 296. is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. 
Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. tough times and some tearful moments on my 
circuitous journey to ordained ministry. But he couldn't protect me from those novel experiences. Leadership pangs, so to speak, brand new experiences that he nor I predicted. He continues to help me to navigate the rapids of ministry as I ride and as I steer the raft. Most importantly, he encouraged me to be with the Lord. The second most important thing he did was that he introduced me to a book called First Things First, authored by Stephen Covey, Roger Merrill, and Rebecca Merrill. Jim's coaching and the book's content has helped me to discern a sense of mission, my deep yes. My mission is to enable mutual thriving. Emmanuel United Church has a mission to be a welcoming, caring faith community committed to practices of spiritual nurture and living God's love, sharing God's love as experienced in Jesus Christ. Being with Jesus, prayerfully discerning a mission statement and living out faithfully my roles and responsibilities Jim taught me that those are critical, and yet they do not provide immunity to uncertainty, pain, and disappointment. And I think all of us would agree. I think my mentor would have given me the same advice, whatever career path I chose. The advice of being with Jesus applies to everyone, applies to all disciples. It applies to all of us as we strive to learn from Jesus and to model our lives around his teachings and his way. <coughs> Jesus' disciples had a mentor. Jesus mentored his disciples. Jesus spent three years with his disciples. They ate with him. They slept with him. They heard him snore. They saw him in action. And he sent them out with a mission to proclaim the gospel, to heal, to cleanse, and to expose evil. They witnessed him rising early for prayer. They saw how he coped with bad days. They saw how he dealt with rejection from people within his own community, from religious leaders. I imagine that some of those shared experiences were painful and scary. They had a rare opportunity to be with Jesus. They saw how Jesus dealt with being called the devil's dealer. Can you imagine Jesus being called the devil's dealer, Beezable? They witnessed the high points of his healing and teaching ministry, and they knew the threats against his life. They experienced vulnerability with Jesus. They saw the persecution he faced, and they faced persecution too. If Jesus fully identifies with the experience of being human, then Jesus knew the moments that would put fear in the hearts of his followers. Jesus is saying that being with him in spirit is enough. Jesus knew that being with his teacher, God, the one whom he called Abba, being with Abba was enough for him. Being with Jesus is enough for us. When we face rejection, when we face confrontation. In today's Gospel reading, three times Jesus offers consolation to his disciples. All three of these statements begin with these words, Do not be afraid. I quote, So do not be afraid of them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, 
but cannot kill the soul. Do not be afraid, you are worth more than sparrows. The repetition of this phrase, do not be afraid, suggests that there was and there is much for disciples to fear. The disciples have good reason to feel fear. They live with a great uncertainty in a dominant culture that is hostile to their beliefs. Jesus is addressing the faithful of his time who seek to live into their faith while facing conflict and discouragement and even threats to their physical well-being because of the gospel's calling. While sent on a mission of preaching and healing, the disciples come face to face with opposition and struggle. God knows our pain and God knows our struggle because Christ lived. Christ felt that pain. Christ suffered and experienced rejection. The love of God revealed in Jesus Christ, it is compelling and it is radical. It is resisted and it is resented. The earliest disciples knew something that we often take for granted. Jesus has never stopped being with us. They knew that Jesus being taken up in the cloud at the ascension was not about Jesus' departure. The sign pointed to the God of the Israelites who leads God's people by day through a pillar of cloud. The sign of the cloud points to the presence of God who is sovereign, who reigns over us, who is always with us. So we can imagine them looking up and seeing the cloud and sensing Jesus' presence. They interpreted the cloud to be Jesus leading them as they went from place to place. Imagine, if you will, them talking among themselves and remembering Jesus saying, It is enough. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. Being with Jesus is enough for the disciples of Jesus' day because Jesus knows their pain. Being with Jesus is enough for the disciples of this day because Jesus knows the rejection. He knows the ways in which a secular world does not take the church too seriously anymore. The Holy Spirit is their helper. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Behind all the rhetoric of the trials and costliness of discipleship, Jesus is saying that being with him is enough. Being with him fills us up with grace. Jesus is saying we will sense his presence, not only while gazing at the clouds, but in the daily trials. The Holy Spirit gives us the words to say when we face hard questions, and criticism. Jesus is with us when we arrive at crossroads and when we embrace our cross. Jesus reminds us that his reign is being brought to completion. Jesus will see it through. Matthew's community believed that they would see the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ in their time. Jesus, in a cosmic sense, is with us as we look toward the fulfillment of his reign. God cares deeply for each one of us. Jesus draws this important parallel. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. Jesus is saying that we are not outside of God's parental care. God cares deeply for us. Being with Jesus is foundational to anything that we strive to do, and it is foundational to our thriving. 
homiletics professor Tom Long puts it this way. First, the Holy Spirit will surely be present and will never abandon us. Second, we will come to recognize that our suffering is not wasted. Our sacrifice is noted and it is a testimony to our faith. Third, even in the midst of hardships, we will know that nothing eradicates the gospel or destroys God's loving and careful watch over God's faithful. The gospel shakes up values, rearranges priorities, and reorients goals. It may even trigger a crisis of loyalties in households. Hey, in our striving to be followers of Jesus, we have all encountered some hostility. Low forms of aggression for taking a controversial stand on one subject or issue or the other. I am sure that many of you who are hearing this message relate. Have you ever felt vilified at a social gathering or a family dinner table because you stood up for the rights of a marginalized group? Have you ever had someone from your own circle try to call you out on having a different perspective because they wanted to tear you down? That's the kind of crisis of loyalty that Jesus is talking about. Will you choose loyalty to a misguided family value or loyalty to Jesus? I am sure that many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. The radical teachings of the gospel can put you at odds with your family and friends and even people in places of power. Jesus seems to say, keep calm. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. The mission remains the same. Jesus sends out his disciples as recorded in Matthew 10 verse 7. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Declare clean those the world chastises as unclean. Expose the evils of this world. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus confers great authority, great authority on his disciples, the disciples of his day, and Jesus confers great authority on the disciples of our day. We are Jesus' students. We learn from Jesus. Jesus gives power to perform signs of transformation and healing in the world. Jesus provides a hopeful message to proclaim. Jesus blesses us daily. The heartbeat of the gospel is grace and love, forgiveness and renewal, hope and joy, all good things. But grace reveals the cracks of woundedness. Love is expressed in the tears of the brokenhearted. Forgiveness exposes the raw edges of sin. Renewal points to the fragments of a broken world. And joy displaces and exposes a culture of faith. The gospel brings hope and exposes that which chokes the gift of life. The light of the gospel exposes the world's darkness. Now don't get me wrong, following Jesus brings us deep joy, satisfaction. It leads to mutual thriving. And as followers, we need to expect and accept resistance. Jesus promises us to be with us, with us always to the end of this age. God is mindful of our suffering 
and grace is sufficient. Putting first things first, the basis of discipleship is a beautiful life-giving relationship with Jesus our Lord. My mentor gave me good advice for my walk with the Lord and I leave it with you. Begin each day with the Lord. Prayerfully discern God's life-giving mission. Faithfully live out the various roles and responsibilities to which we are called. Being with the Lord is primary. The doing flows from the experience of being with Jesus. It is enough. It is enough for students, for learners of the Lord such as us, for disciples of the Lord to be like their teachers. Jesus will fulfill what he begun. Perfect love casts out fear. Jesus says, will you come and follow me? This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Our hymn is, will you come and follow me? It is found in Voices United, number 567. We are singing verses 1, 2, and 5. that grieves 
his loss and his death. We also remember in a special way our friends, our family members for whom COVID-19 has been a major stressor that affected their physical health and their mental health. We ask you, O oh God, for your grace and your compassion for those for whom this has been a very stressful time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you know us, each one of us by name, and that we are indeed your compassionate choice. Let us prepare our hearts to pray as a community. Creator God, we thank you for your faithfulness towards us. We look up at billowing white clouds in the skies and we sense your presence. Summer arrives today and all of creation is alive with color and texture. New life is maturing and emerging. We sense your life-giving presence. We encounter you in our daily study of scripture. We thank you that we can enter into your presence daily through prayer. We thank you for the privilege of being with you. We experience joys and challenges in living out your mission. You promise to keep your word. You promise to bring to completion the work which you have begun. You say it is enough for us to be with you. You fill us up with grace for the journey. You are our rest. You are our joy. You are our comforting balm. You are our strength. On this day, O oh God, we pray for our loved ones, those who are ill and those who are grieving. We pray for those we love who are discerning major life decisions or managing major life transitions. We pray for those who are experiencing health challenges, physical and mental. We pray for those who feel acutely the pain of isolation. Bless those we love. Bless churches across this city, across this province, across this country, and across this world as they discern plans for a safe reopening. We pray for your wisdom as we strive to be mindful of the needs of the communities that we serve. Bless our businesses as they open up especially those where it is impossible to maintain social distancing. Help us all to adjust to the realities of wearing masks and PPE. Lord, you know well the systemic injustices and brokenness of our world. Women continue to be denied full rights in certain parts of the world. Wars persist. Children still go to bed hungry. Racism persists. And basic human rights are still denied. Help your disciples the world over to continue your work toward shalom. Bless your global church with a deep faith and renew their commitment to serve Christ's mission when we can't go forward on our own, help us to creatively serve with others. Empower your church through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you know intimately our individual needs. We offer them to you 
in this time of silence. Grant us mercy, O God. Grant us compassion, comfort, and healing. Bring cheer to us when we are brokenhearted. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who promises to be with us always. Amen. Our hymn for going out in the world is, O Jesus, I have promised. It is found in Voices United at number 120. We shall sing verses 1, 3, and 4.